Hey guys, Richard Holdner here and welcome to the channel. How well does the new Holly split design single plane race manifold actually work? In this video, I'm going to run a test on the semi new Holly two piece single plane intake manifold. Then along the way, I'm also going to compare some other single plane dual plane tests on other motors to put the results that we get on the Holly test into perspective. Let's check it out. Before we get to the comparison of the uh, new Holly split single plane intake manifold versus a dual plane, I wanted to kind of put it into perspective so you can see what typically happens when we run a single plane and dual plane. So we'll start out with a test that I did on a 4.8 liter. This was an LR4. It did have the JE small dome pistons in it because it had a bunch of rust in the cylinders and, and when I got the motor originally from the wrecking yard. So we had to bore it out and put we put a forged piston in it. It had a stock block crank and stock Gen 4 rods. It just had that piston upgrade and then it had 706 heads with valve springs in it a beehive valve spring it had a small comp extreme energy 265 cam which was a 522 529 lift a 212 218 degree duration split and 114 degree low separation angle fairly mild and then we had uh, an edelbrock performer rpm dual plane intake manifold a 650 xp carburetor we ran it with the MSD ignition controller, like most of these carbureted applications. And this one had inch and seven eighths headers with uh, collector extensions on them. And what we did was we compared the dual plane RPM versus the Victor Junior. And you can see what happens when we do a single plane dual plane thing. This one was on a 4.8. So here's what happened when we ran the dual plane. The combination produced 375 horsepower. Remember, this is a 4.8 and 341 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we installed the Victor Junior. It made almost identical peak power, 376 horsepower, but you can see through most of the curve, the single plane made a lot less power. The, and this is pretty typical. What, what we normally see when we run a single plane, dual plane on an LS or a small block, big block, whatever, is there's gonna be some crossover point normally. Normally a, a single plane can make more power at the top, depending on what the combination is, and then less down low. And then a lot of times it's just a trade off of where you want your power production. In this particular case on this mild four, 4.8 liter, the single plane was just not a good choice. It just didn't make good power. It made less power basically from 5,700 all the way down and down at 3,500 in the low speed range, it would be dramatically different, dramatically softer in torque production. So for driving around the dual plane on the 4.8, it really is a good way. So let's take a look at another single plane dual plane and then we can get to the um, single plane Holly test. So we've got another comparison, this one at a little bit higher RPM, which you would think might favor the single plane intake manifold, because typically dual planes are better down low and make more torque down low, and the single planes can make more power up at the top of the RPM range. And we'll take a look at a comparison we did. This one was on basically the same 4.8 short block. It had the JE forged pistons in it, otherwise stock block, crank, and Gen 4 rods. This one had a set of TrickFlow 205 heads on it, and a little bit bigger camshaft. This one had a BTR um, stage one blower cam. And I'll go ahead and put the specs up. It's a 610 586 lift. It is a 223, 238 degree duration split and 120 degree lobe separation angle. The wide lobe separation angle is often used when they run positive displacement blower cams. We would eventually put a Vortex centrifugal supercharger on there showing you that you can run a positive displacement blower cam uh, on a centrifugal blower and it, and it works okay. Um, it, it tends to push power production higher in the RPM range, which a lot of guys wouldn't want. And the reason that they do that on the PD blower cams is because that way you can, the positive displacement blower usually has immediate boost response. So it has a lot of low speed power. Um, it might be a better choice to put a different camshaft in with a centrifugal just so that you could enhance more torque production down low. But that's a whole nother video for another time. This um, 4.8 had the TrickFlow 205 heads on it. We had inch and three quarter uh, QTP headers. We had our MSD ignition controller. We had an ATI damper on this thing because we, we would be running the Vortec on it. We ran it with a Performer RPM uh, dual plane intake first and a Holly 750 carburetor. And so equipped our 4.8 liter produced 440 horsepower all the way out at 7,000 RPM. Peak torque came at 352 foot pounds. This is with the dual plane intake manifold. Here's what happened when we installed the Edelbrock uh, Victor Junior intake manifold. 
you can see that it did make a little bit more a little bit more peak power actually it made a little bit less peak power <laughs> oddly enough than the dual plane um but and it did make uh, quite a bit less power again down low like we saw with the previous test we can see below 5000 rpm we see that the dual or that the single plane just made a lot less torque as much as 30 or 40 foot pounds down low and we even started this run at 3500 uh, because we knew that the signal would kind of be bad from the single plane intake manifold on the little 4.8, especially with this much camshaft. So we would eventually run a Vortec and blow through a CSU carburetor on both of these to illustrate that the same kind of thing still happens under boost, which obviously it does. But it goes to show you that the single plane dual plane, typically the single plane makes more power on top. Sometimes it doesn't, depending on the displacement of the motor and the power output. So now let's take a look at what happened when we ran the Holly, and that should put those results into perspective. Now that we've seen what happens when we run a single plane dual plane comparison on a couple of uh, 4.8s, a fairly mild one and then one with a little bit bigger camshaft and solar head on it, we can kind of appreciate what happens with this test on the Holly split single plane manifold. You can see I'll go ahead and load a picture up here. You can kind of take a look at what's going on. It has, uh, you know, longer runner lengths than the typical, like the Victor Jr. that we had tested previously on the other combination. And we're comparing it to the same dual plane performer RPM. This was a slightly different combination. It was actually a 5.3 liter. In fact, it was bored out uh, 30 over. This was also, this thing also had higher compression. It had a set of uh, West Coast cylinder head ported 706 heads. And they had done a lot to them, basically. They'd done a lot of porting. The, these had been milled 20 thousandths. He was trying to get the compression up. So he'd, he had milled the heads, put a dome piston on it, raised the piston out of the hole because um, they had decked the block and done a lot of things. They actually were able to push the compression on this motor, on this 5.3, up to about 11 and a half to 1, which was fairly impressive. Um, he did run a fairly small camshaft in this. It was a stage 3 truck cam, which was a 553 lift. 218, 224 degree duration, and 110 degree lobe separation angle. And, and again, we ran it with uh, a set of inch and seven eighths long tube headers with the collector extensions. And then we ran it first with a performer RPM and a 750 Holley carburetor with the MSD controller. So this was kind of a high compression, mild cam, which might be a little bit <laughs> interesting in terms of running it on pump gas. We did that on the dyno, it ran on 91, but out in the car, it might be a little bit more difficult. He is going to be putting a uh, EFI intake manifold on it, a faster Trailblazer SS, which it's going to make even more power than it made here, more than likely. But it will be an interesting combination with that high of compression. Uh, we ran this with the RPM and the 750 Holley, and Brule did the jetting and tuning on this thing. This thing made peak power 439 horsepower. It was kind of flat between 63 and 6500 RPM. Peak torque with the dual plane checked in at 423 foot pounds down below 4000 RPM. This is fairly common for the dual plane. Here's what happened when we put the Holly single plane on there. 
we got some pretty big power gains for the single plane. We ran it out to 6,600 RPM and it made 467 horsepower. So it was doing very well. And I think honestly that this manifold would shine even more if we had it on a bigger than, than a 5.3 liter combination. It was, it was a 5.7, a 6.0, or even some kind of stroker deal. Um, and something that was running more camshaft and more engine speed. But the crossover point on this thing was pretty, pretty good. It uh, crossed over between 48 and 4,900 RPM where the single plane was making more power than the dual plane. And as we have come to expect, typically the dual plane made more power down low than the single plane. But but I was impressed by the gains that the this particular single plane made on this combination. As I said, I think that's probably even more power to be had um, with another, you know, wilder, bigger kind of combination. The peak torque on this single plane checked in at 412 foot pounds, and that compares to 422. So the peak to peak, it was down about 10, but they happened at dramatically different engine speeds. And that's why like I said, normally single plane, you think about that for higher engine speeds and a dual plane for lower engine speeds. The peak torque on the dual plane occurred down here at 3,900 RPM. In fact, yeah, 3,900 RPM, and peak torque for the single plane occurred out here at 5,400 RPM. So a big split, and it goes to show you where these intake manifolds are designed to run. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn testing the Holly single plane two-piece intake manifold? Well, we learned a couple things. First of all, we learned single plane manifolds and dual plane manifolds obviously have different operating ranges. Intake manifolds are kind of RPM specific, and we showed that perfectly clear on all the testing that we ran on the single plane versus the dual plane on the various LS motors. More specifically, that Holly single plane two-piece manifold obviously performed very well. And I honestly think that this is probably the wrong combination to test it on, although it did show some fairly serious power gains even on this mild application. But this motor with more camshaft in it, or an even bigger one, a 6.0 or 408, any kind of stroker version that's going to need more airflow and with more camshaft, we want to run even more engine speed, is going to perform even better with that manifold. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. I'll keep testing.